with this kind of work, no two years are the same. So just when you think you've learned something, Mother Nature comes along and changes everything. Probably a hybrid. Um, I, I used to think that the winemaking part was the tougher part, but today I think you know the high-level farming is actually the most challenging aspect, and to do it economically. You know, most of our innovation today is coming in the vineyard. The winemaking, however, can't be ignored. It's a hand-in-glove relationship. If you say, "Well, I'm going to put my focus in just growing high-quality grapes," that's not going to get you there. Same things that it did 40 years ago, only it's even better. <laughs> Every day is a kind of uh, an adventure in the sense that uh, there's only so much you can know. Uh, you know. It's said, for example, that even the most basic wine has over 500 components. And so it's a very much craftsman kind of thing. And it's the beauty of creating something better than you did you know, through the effort over time. And what I love is just the fact it's, sometimes it's incremental improvement, sometimes it's a breakthrough, like a revolutionary thing. Mm -hmm. And both are exciting. The other part that I like is the cultural interaction and working in different countries and helping places that could have been famous at one time or very you know, great re regions. Very gratifying to go and work in such a place and help bring back, you're never bringing it back to the past glory, sure. or maybe, maybe, for example, in the case of Argentina, which never really had any glory, <laughs> building its first glory. Uh, may not appear that way today, but I, I'm kind of an introvert. When I met Mr. Mondavi, I realized, well, maybe this business isn't for me because he was quite extroverted and it's a very social business and public speaking was very intimidating. It's kind of awkward, if, especially at first, to talk about what you do, or at least I was taught that's not a very good thing to do. To actually uh, get out in front of people and say, well, here's what I've done. I would prefer other people say that than me. But now I've, I've grown more comfortable with it because it's just kind of laying out things to help people understand the work and what's behind it. I think that adds to the appreciation. Frankly, that's one of the reasons I enjoy getting out into the market and meeting people is, is I don't want to make wine in a vacuum. Also, just to see how people are dining, eating, and you know, how they look at entertainment, to hear them talk about their home life. Because a lot of people are very intimate with the re, you know, respect, even though you, you just know them that evening. They talk about, because I have children, that is like an opening for family, you know, family conversation, this kind of thing. Uh, so then they tell me about their work, their family, their, you know, how they wine is a part of their life. But over the course of a few days of those kind of conversations, you start to paint a picture. And that has a big impact on how I think about what I'm doing. Sure. And it's curious because um, we, we are in 30 markets now worldwide, so I spend time in Asian and European markets as well as North and South America. Curiously, there's a lot of parallels. <laughs> I find that in the, in, the, in the end that people are the same everywhere, the Chinese, the uh, Singaporeans, the Japanese, and so on. Yeah, they have maybe particular taste. The Vietnamese, they like French wines, because that's what they're accustomed to drinking, and they were obviously a French colony at one time. So they might start with that, but then our portfolio is a little broader than that, so they can try wines that we make in Spain, Argentina, and California. But the French wines that I make are the, are sort of the icebreaker. And so this kind of thing is kind of cool.